Hello everyone, thank you for attending my talk. My name is Andreas Michael and I'm with Cipriana Petroleum Technology. The title of my talk is uh, Manometric Method for Sorbed Gas Estimation in Organic Reed Shales Considering Matrix Swelling, an overview, and the paper number is 3142, which is an easy to remember number because if you put a period between 3 and 1, it becomes the number symbolized by the Greek letter P. This paper proposes a laboratory setup for indirectly estimating a sorbed gas in organic rich, or basically natural gas rich shales, uh, where this estimation is made uh, by quantifying some uh, geomechanical properties of those uh, shales, such as uh, volumetric strain, which is indicative of the matrix swelling, which uh, takes place when the core is exposed to a high pressure uh, adsorbate gas like carbon dioxide, CO2, or methane, CH4. Current practices for doing so are more direct in nature, uh, like the canister method. However, they are severely flawed, and we are trying with a more complex indirect method to compensate for these drawbacks and lead to a more accurate estimation of the sorbed gas capacity in uh, organic shales. So let's uh, start. A significant portion of natural gas saturation in uh, shales is found adsorbed as layers on liquid layers on the pore surfaces. Uh, as we know, shales are, have very low porosity and an even lower permeability. And uh, these pores are tiny, and the walls on those pores uh, have layers of adsorbed gas, and this constitutes a big portion of the gas that uh, those shales can hold in place, which is what we drill for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, current direct practices of measuring that are severely flawed, and I will talk about it in more detail later. Nevertheless, adsorbed gas parameters can be coupled with quantifiable uh, geomechanical parameters, and this can work to our benefit. Uh, the end goal of this project is to be able to quantify the gas in place into those shales and hence be able to identify sweet spots where we can drill. Uh, it's essentially a formation evaluation subtopic. Uh, current practices, the most common current practice is what is known as the canister method. And this is used to directly measure the gas release from core samples right after drilling. Uh, the procedure or the setup is fairly simple, and we can see it in this schematic here. You have a canister where the core is placed as soon as it's pulled out of the hole. Uh, then the canister is uh, closed shut and let there for uh, some time. And during that time, gas gets released into the air, into the air that is already in the canister, and raises its pressure. And the pressure increase in the canister is directly proportional to what is known as the desorbed gas amount from that coal. Um, we have here a picture of a field hand placing a coal inside a canister and is about to shut it from 2002. And this is more or less the technology used today. 
like I said, uh, it's there are severe drawbacks with this method. The first one is that uh, the amount of lost gas, which is the gas that is lost from the time that the shale sample is cold until it's placed in the canister and the canister is shut. Uh, because this happens early in the process, the amount of gas released is not insignificant because the amount of gas released with time is uh, decreasing. So we're talking about a big portion of the total dissolved amount that we are losing. Nevertheless, there have been uh, correlations derived for estimating those. Uh, I think Farzam Javadpur from the Bureau of Economic Geology at UT has a couple of papers on lost gas estimation. Another drawback uh, is also that this process takes a long time and is not easy for a quick, uh, if quick decision making is needed. Uh, before uh, giving a detailed description of uh, the proposed laboratory method, uh, there need to be some basic uh, calculations that are necessary uh, as background to be able to understand uh, this uh, process that we are talking about. The end goal is to create a sorption isotherm, which describes the excess gas absorbed per unit volume compared to the gas amount in absence of pore walls. This is achieved by what is basically a material balance, uh, where we have the total mass, excess sorbed mass, being equal to the total sorbed ma mass minus the uh, mass that can fit in the pores of, uh, of the coal, which is basically the gas density at the given conditions times the pore volume. And I have here the pore volume VP, comma AG because in the laboratory is measured using Boyle's law with uh, helium fluid. And uh, of course, the adsorbate gas density uh, will be estimated uh, using a reliable EOS, which is not easy actually. Um, then an adapted three parameter version of the Langmuir model uh, for high pressure can be used um, in order to quantify the excess sorbed capacity of the core at the given conditions. I first saw this equation in Gasparic's paper from 2014, this adaptation, and it relays the excess sorbed uh, gas capacity in uh, millimoles per gram to what is known as to the pressure PL which is known as the Langmuir pressure and uh, NL which is uh, the Langmuir volume or the maximum uh, Langmuir capacity. And of course, we have uh, the density of the gas, or the adsorbate gas at the given conditions, and the density rho alpha of the adsorbate layer. Our proposed manometric method, manometric is the name because it's related to pressure, involves core testing in a complex laboratory setup. As we see here, we have a high pressure adsorbate gas, methane or carbon dioxide connected to pumps, which uh, push it into the sample cell where the core is placed within a cantilever beam, which has attached strain gauges on it. So as it swells during its exposure to high pressure adsorbate gas, the steam gauges measure the 
strain, the volumetric strain, strain, which is a quantification of the matrix swelling. So yeah, we are trying this method is called indirect because we are trying to relate volumetric strain to exsorption, basically. Now, quantifying matrix swelling is a fairly simple process, uh, despite the difficulty to do that in the lab uh, due to, uh, I guess, setup uh, difficulties. If we assume transverse isotropy for the shale cores perpendicular to the core axis, which is assumed to be in the z direction, the volumetric strain will be equal to two times the radial strain in x and y direction plus the axial strain in the z direction, e epsilon zz. Uh, the sorption induced matrix swelling of the shale is of course competing with poroelastic compression of forces, which we need to take account of. So the volumetric strain, we need to add to it the elastic uh, strain in order to get the sorption uh, induced strain, which is indicative with the quantification of the sorption induced matrix, matrix swelling. The net volumetric strain can, against uh, CO2 content, can be can be related to the matrix swelling epsilon mi m. Sorry using the pressure and the Langmuir pressure. And the epsilon M, the matrix swelling, is really what we would be using as the independent variable in this study. Um, there have been some papers where uh, the results, laboratory studies, not extensive, but the results were very promising. We have seen uh, Pang et al. from 2019 doing two equal for shale samples and seeing direct, uh, sorry, logarithmic relationship between uh, the pressure at which those, uh, those uh, The, the pressure at which uh, those cores were exposed to in regards to adsorbate gas and the induced volumetric strain. And the same thing by two samples from Chen et al. from 2015. And of course, the absorption capacity is also logarithmically related to the volumetric strain. So the relationships are there and uh, they can be used uh, to achieve the goal that we have. However, uh, the difficulty is really in the laboratory procedure due to the very small amount of strains that need to be calculated. And also considering that applications outside uh, carbon sequestration uh, which are related to methane, the strain induced by methane is much smaller than the strain induced by CO2, so it will be even harder to measure. However, there might be ways to relate the two, so you can measure in the lab CO2 using CO2 and uh, extrapolate to CH4. Also, there is hysteresis involved by pressurizing and depressurizing, so there needs to be uh, considered. And yeah, also, so um, the conclusion is that uh, sub gas uh, capacity estimations can be quantified by uh, doubling with uh, easy to quantify geomechanic parameters relatively easy. 
Uh, three parameter Langmuir exersorption equation shows a good fit with exersorption isotherm data in shales. And volumetric strains uh, should be corrected for strain caused by the poroelastic effect, as I showed three slides ago. And even though the indirect manometric method eliminates some flaws of the canister method for sorption capacity estimations in shales, it exhibits a lot of complexities. And uh, further work is necessary because before this uh, method, this manometric indirect method becomes a, a common practice in the industry. And with that, Thank you very much.